Thanks for joining me, Bastish B, for Import City, a look at the world of 80s and 90s Japanese gaming. In particular, we're going to check out Japan exclusive games and English fan translations, and show some really fun stuff that require no Japanese to enjoy. If you like the Famicom, Super Famicom, Mega Drive, Mega CD, Saturn and PSX, then this may be for you. So now let's check out today's two games. So on today's episode we're going to have a look at two visual novel style games. The first one up is Police Knots by Konami, followed up by Akira by Taito. And on the pop culture front we'll have a brief look at the history of visual novel games in Japan. But now on to the first game. Police and Orts was released on the Sega Saturn in late 1996 by Konami. It wasn't the first version, but it is considered the most complete concise one of them all. We are going to look at this version, which got an unofficial English translation in 2016 by Junker HQ, making this game fully playable to Western audiences. The game is essentially a visual novel detective adventure game, with a few arcade shooting gallery sequences in between. It was created by Hideo Kojima, and was an extension of all the ideas and gameplay he had devised for his previous game, Snatcher, a cyberpunk inspired detective game with similar ideas and gameplay to Police Knots. The story is an accident in space leaves you in cryo sleep for 24 years until you are found and woken up. You're now a detective in LA and have to travel back to a space colony where your accident originally happened to investigate why your ex wife was murdered and the disappearance of her husband. The Police Knots reference refers to your character Jonathan's training as a police officer and astronaut which was necessary when he worked on the space colony, Beyond Coast, which he now has to return to. More info on the story will essentially ruin it, as it is the heart of the game. Gameplay though involves dialogue trees for choices, a point and click style interface to investigate everything, and dashes of shooting gallery sequences for the action elements. All these flow together extremely well once you start playing. Kojima's goal was to make a game with a story and characters that match the complexity of movies of the time, and if you've ever played any retro games, you know story is the least impressive part of them. Kojima wears his influences on his sleeve with countless references to movies, music, books and animation. You name it and it's in ya. And always gives his games that little wink to the audiences which I absolutely love and would later come into effect even more so in the PS1 and PS2 series of Metal Gear Solid games. There were multiple attempts to translate this game into English at the time of its PS1 release but all failed due to the complexity of the writing and western audiences general disinterest with visual novel style games at least at that time. Although a brilliant game, the Sega CD version of Snatcher was not a financial hit for Konami on western shores, leading them to leave this game in Japan only. The writing and characters here are amazing and interesting. The investigation slowly unfolds like an old film noir movie and gets more intriguing as it goes along and the environments and locations are lovingly detailed, with cyberpunk, classic sci-fi and good old detective movies from the classic Hollywood era days. It's a perfect mix of them all with beautiful anime cutscenes for the really important parts. Talking about this game without mentioning its epic soundtrack, which I bought the vinyl release here for would be an absolute sin. It's a mixture of jazzy Japanese city pop and beautiful haunting orchestral pieces. It's amazing and well worth a listen. This satin fan translation is excellent and I can't even imagine the amount of time it must have taken considering how dialogue heavy Kojima games are. This satin version though is the one to play in my opinion. You can use the satin virtual crop guns for those shooting sequences. It has deleted scenes and extra dialogue, bonus videos upon completing the game and the anime cutscenes run at 24 frames per second as opposed to 15 on the PSX. And with this fan translation, now is the perfect time to enjoy this Kojima classic on the satin. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message.
The visual novel style of gaming has always been embraced by Japan, but rarely seen outside of their country, at least until the last decade or so, with the rise of indie games and smaller companies taking up the translation challenge. It's still a small sub-genre of gaming in the West, but there is definitely an audience for this style of entertainment. The genre spawned roughly in the mid-80s in Japan with a couple of notable games such as Portopia Serial Murder Case, appearing on the NEC PC 6001 which featured non-linear gameplay, branching paths and a point-and-click interface. For Western audiences though, this would be considered an adventure game, but in Japan, this and Square's Sui Sho no Dragon on the Famicom Disk System are considered early examples of the visual novel style. Japan's PCs were generally seen as the home for this style of gameplay, which evolved into more novel style with less open world style aspects, and concentrating a lot more on the narrative with choices to make and multiple endings available. But with the popularity of anime led many series getting their own visual novel treatment and many started flooding the consoles of the 90s like the PSX, Saturn and Dreamcast. The genre is not as straightforward as it seems either, with many variations on the basic structure, such as ones employing dating elements, RPG battle sequences and horror related. It's a really interesting genre of gaming to explore, but it's definitely not for everyone. I found personally games such as Snatcher, Na 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 and the awesome 428 Shibuya Scramble offer enough variation and interactivity in the genre to make them personally appealing for me. And now let's jump back to today's second game. Akira was released in 1988 on the Famicom by Taito and was an adaptation of the anime released only 5 months earlier in Japanese cinemas. It was a visual novel style game with a few small action sequences and followed the plot of the movie very closely. Both game and movie were based on the post-apocalyptic cyberpunk manga masterpiece by Katsuhiro Otomo who also wrote the scripts for the anime classic films Metropolis and Steam Boy. When I first watched this anime in the early 90s on a bootleg VHS, it completely changed my perspective on cartoons. Even though I've seen adult style animation, in particular Ralph Bakshi's Fire and Ice and Wizards, this was full on cyberpunk violence and politically charged as it got. Making this into a game was always going to be a bit difficult due to the story taking center stage over action. So in a sense the choice to make a visual novel style game out of it was a good one, but due to that as well meant that the game never got an English release and remains to this day a Japan exclusive. Fortunately in 2012, Grimm Translations did a very good English translation here of the game for all Akira fans to enjoy. And that's also a big part of the appeal of this game in particular, is you're gonna have to be a fan, otherwise it may not be as engaging to you. The game follows the movie's plot pretty closely, with you taking on the role of Kaneda, a member of a gang of motorcycle punks living in Neo Tokyo, who ends up embroiled in a massive government conspiracy, a political revolution and your friend Tetsuo being abducted by the government and experimented on to hideous results. It's an insane roller coaster of a ride to say the least. The game through its visual novel style retells a story, but there are elements of adventure gaming, choice and a little bit of action. There are a lot of choices to make, which mostly involve searching or talking to everyone in all locations, but there are plenty of little action based choices which can lead to your death. The arcade shooting sections are pretty simple and basic, and they are clearly here just to add a little bit of variety to the pace, as the game is very slow overall. What's quite impressive though is the graphics, especially considering it's such an early title in the genre. They really put the effort into capturing the look of the movie, with nice stills interpreting the major scenes and all of the filler in between. Plus there are plenty of animated sequences capturing key moments of the story. There's also a pretty good little chip tune at the beginning, but besides that the sound is pretty lackluster. Overall I gotta say it's quite impressive, especially considering it's a 90 1988 Famicom release. It does overall capture the movie pretty well in what could have easily been another cheap mindless platformer cashing in on a movie. Having said that though, this is definitely for Akira fans only. If you haven't seen the movie or read the manga, it will lessen your enjoyment here, but I still think it's a great example of this genre in its infancy. 